All right then, gang, so we're nearly at the finish line now. We just need to do a few more things, but now we have our user validator class, and all we need to do is create a new instance of this class after a user submits the form and pass in the post data, which they entered into these fields. And then it can do all the validation. It can spit back any errors, if there are any, and then we can output those to the user in the screen, if there are any. So let's go back to index.php. And first of all, right here, this is where we need to validate the entries. So let's delete that echo statement, first of all, and instead create a new instance of the user validator class. Now, before I do that, I need to use that class inside this file. So I need to then say at the top, require, and we're going to require user underscore validator.php, right? So now we can use that class inside this file. So down here, I can create a new instance of that class and I'll call this validation and set it equal to new user validator. Okay, so now we need to pass in the post data to this, which is just dollar sign underscore and post like so. That is an array and it's gonna contain keys which should be username and email okay so now we need to call this method this method right here validate form because that's what kicks everything off we check the fields to see if they exist and if they do we call these two methods down here to check the individual fields then we return any errors at the end so first of all let's say errors because that's what's ultimately returned to us let's not do this in capitals <laughs> errors is equal to validation, which is our instance, and then we'll invoke the validate form method. And by the way, I just wanna say at this point, and it's a funny point to say it, I should have said it at the start, there's many, many ways to do this kind of validation. I'm just doing one particular way here, right? So if you ask 100 programmers to do this, you'll probably get at least about 75 different ways, probably 100 different ways of doing this. So don't feel like this is all set in stone and this is exactly how you should be doing it. I'm just showing you an example of creating a class and using it right here. And there are many ways of doing this. But anyway, I digress. Let's carry on with this. We're calling this method, which is ultimately going to return us an array of errors. That could be empty if there's no errors, but we'll still store that empty array right here. Now, at this point, if the errors were empty, this is where we'd probably save data to a database, right? If that's what we're doing with it. Now, if there are errors, then instead what we're going to do is output them to the form. I'm not going to do this check right here and save anything to the database. That's not what this course is all about. We're just focused on our class and the form at the minute. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check if there's any errors down here inside the actual template and then output them. All right. So before I do that, what I want to do is save this and just refresh over here. Then I'm going to continue and I'm going to now do all this stuff right here. And OK, this happens without any errors. But check this out. If I now go to this form down here and change this to emails, for example, and save it, I'm going to refresh over here. I'm going to continue. And then if I try to enter some stuff in, now we get an error. It says email is not present in the data. So that was this error before right here. So remember when we checked each of the fields and to check that those fields right here exist, right now we're saying actually it can't find this field in the post data because now we don't have that field inside our form. It's now emails and it should be email. So if we change that back, then we're not going to get any error. If I submit this now, then it should all work. OK, we need to actually reload the page because that's there now. But anyway, if I do it now, then we don't get that error. OK, so the next thing to do is actually output any errors if there are any. Now, I'm going to do a separate div under each of these input fields. And this is actually going to have a class equal to error. So we can style this in a second. Just color it red or coral or something in a minute. Then we need to echo something out. So PHP tags, first of all, PHP, close that off. And we're going to echo and we're going to use the null coalesce operator to do this. So if something has a value, it outputs that. If it doesn't have a value, it outputs something else. So we're going to check if errors and then username 
has a value. Now, if there is an error with that key inside that errors array, then it will output it. Then we do double question mark, and then this is the alternate value that will output if this is null. So if that error doesn't exist, then we're not actually outputting anything, just an empty string, right? Again, you can learn more about this null coalesce operator in my PHP for Beginners series. Anyway, so now we need to duplicate that dude and paste it down here. And this time we want to check the email one, all right? So if we save this now, let's check this out. So if I submit, now we can see these two things right here. Username cannot be empty and email cannot be empty. If I change this to something like SG, then it says username must be 6 to 12 characters and alpha numeric. So it's no longer empty, but we're getting this different error. And the same for this one. If I enter something that's not a valid email, it says email must be a valid email. So these are working. The thing is, we're not persisting the data that a user types into these fields. So if I submit something like that and it's wrong, even though it's wrong, or rather that wasn't, but if I submit something that's wrong like that, I want that to remain here when the page reloads so a user doesn't have to type out the whole thing again. So to do that, we need to go to the value properties of these input fields. So what I'm gonna do is say value is equal to something and then we're gonna output the actual data in the post array, right? Because that's what a user actually submitted. So let's do our PHP tags. Now we have to surround whatever we output with the function HTML special cars because that is gonna make our code more secure. So that if a user tries to input some kind of JavaScript or something like that, it's not actually gonna run that JavaScript, okay? So that's what this function kind of does. So let's echo HTML special chars. Again, this is all discussed in my beginner series. And then inside this, we need to pass through the post data. So dollar sign underscore post and then the value we want is the username from that okay so now we're outputting this data right here as the value when it reloads now we need to actually do a null coalesce operator here as well because the first time the page loads this is not going to exist and it's going to output some kind of error so instead we do a null coalesce operator so if it doesn't exist then we just output a simple blank string instead so what I'm gonna do is actually grab this thing right here and then down on the other input field, I'm gonna say value is equal to, we need our PHP tags again, close that off. I'm gonna paste this dude right in here and this time I need the email instead. Oops, can I spell? No, it's been a long day. So i have saved that now and if I refresh, I'm gonna see this right here. So if I type something else in now, and something else down here, refresh. I do get the errors. This is valid, by the way, but I do get the errors, but I still get this data inside the input field, so it still shows. Now, if I type something not valid up here, we get the error, but this still shows. Awesome. So that is just about it, my friends. There's one more thing to do, and that's just to add this tiny little style down here. So we're grabbing the error class and we're coloring it coral. Save it, and let's go over here, do this again, and now we can see, no we don't, let's hard refresh. <laughs> and now we can see this error is in coral, so a different color. So my friends, we have reached the finish line. Now we have successfully created this user validator class. And okay, it's only checking two fields, but you could extend this class if you wanted to. You could make additional fields for different things like a password. And then you could make sure that two password fields are the same or something like that. If you do that, if you extend it, leave your links down below so we can all check it out. But there we go. That is this series well and truly over. So hopefully I've taught you a little bit along the way about object oriented programming in PHP and hopefully as well you can see the benefits of using classes in your code. If you've enjoyed this series guys please do not forget to share, subscribe and like that really means a lot and I'm going to see you in the very next series.